Good morning, good morning. On this thankful Thursday, I'm very thankful y'all prayed for my mama yesterday. I'm Elizabeth Inman. This is our Dream Big Today one-year Bible study. Mom's doing better, doing better. I don't exactly know what was going on, but we eliminated some things yesterday, and that is major major so thank you guys for praying for my mama she's not out of the woods yet but she's doing better and i know it was a power of prayers i honestly really and truly believe that when we prayed and we certainly laid hands on her and prayed for her yesterday we spoke directly to that attack that was on her i believe the attack was halted yesterday i really believe that so thank you guys thank you guys for doing life with me. <laughs> good morning, good morning, everybody. Day 82. We're already 82 days in. We read all the way through the Bible. If you're brand new with us, we use a one-year Bible, one-year reading plan. We use a new living translation. Uh, lots of people get up really early. We do this at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. And then at noon time, Central T Standard Time, 12 noon, we do a noon nugget. We pick one piece out of the daily reading to talk about. <clears throat> For those that aren't able to join us because of work or other obligations. So we are spreading God's word. We are getting the word out. We're encouraging people to read for themselves. Please be sure and share your prayer requests, but also share your praise reports. We love, love, love seeing those praise reports. God answers our prayers. Doesn't always look like what we um, think it should look like. And the answers don't always come on the timeline we want it to come on. But I believe... And in today's reading, even today's reading in Psalm 66, <clears throat> verse Psalm 66, verse 19. But God did listen. He paid attention to my prayer. There's lots of scriptures that have convinced me through the years that God hears every prayer I pray and he answers every prayer I pray. I just may not always recognize or I may not like the way he answers all my prayers. Good morning, Mama Mary. I love you bunches too. It was good to hear your voice yesterday. Uh, March the 20th, we start uh, Deuteronomy. We finish up the book of Numbers today and we start Deuteronomy. I want to share a little bit of foundational information about Deuteronomy. Um, I got way more material today than I'm going to have time for. But Deuteronomy will forever be an extremely special book to me it took me a lot of years of reading before I personally ever got to the place that I understood that the book of Deuteronomy is for me I mean by now we already know that Moses isn't going to get to cross over into the promised land Aaron doesn't cross over into the promised land what he has guided these people through for more than 40 years what he has guided these people through, what he has guided these people to, God's chosen people, not just called, but chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. These are God's chosen people. I mean, I've grown up my entire life understanding that Israel is God's holy land, that the Israelites are God's chosen people. What I didn't understand is what Jesus did and how he changed it so that it's no longer just the Israelites that are chosen. But now the Gentiles are God's chosen people, that now there is no segregation, that anyone who calls on the name of Jesus, anyone, all, all good morning michelle sure do miss you sweet lady anyone jesus died for all he took away all cultural barriers 
He took away the barrier between heaven and earth. The veil was torn from the bottom to the from the from the bottom from the bottom to the top. <laughs> Make sure I say that right. Uh, I'm still recovering from calling the Jordan River Jericho. <laughs> um, man, the impact of what Jesus Christ did for us. I, I'll spend the rest of my days fully grasping just exactly what all changed. The difference between Old Testament, New Testament, Old Covenant, New Testament, a uh, New Covenant. Jesus sending us, God sending us the Holy Spirit to indwell in us instead of the Holy Spirit coming on us, like what happened in the Old Testament such a powerful change and it took me years to understand that these words written in the book of Deuteronomy are for me personally they're for you personally that the law has been fulfilled not rendered useless but fulfilled and and as we travel through you're going to pick up nuggets and then it's going to culminate into Moses, God's man, God's man, Moses, a, a, a man who, who had such an intimate relationship with God that he dared get angry with God and argue with God and plead with God on behalf of a sinful people that he literally could stand up in between an intercessory prayer and, and ask God not to take their lives. The boldness that Moses had with God on behalf of a sinful people, on behalf of the very people that Moses himself was angry with. Moses was angry until God got angry. And then all of a sudden, Moses pled with God for their lives. How many times over and over and over again have we already read that Moses stopped God's anger on behalf of the people? Oh, leading up to Deuteronomy, I want to give you some foundational information because this is the beginning of the end for Moses' time on earth. And yet such a pivotal pivotal person in history such a pivotal person to all mankind such a pivotal person for god himself the companionship that god himself experienced with the man moses with his man moses oh i want to be his woman i want to be his woman god's woman elizabeth Deuteronomy is often, often referred to as the second law. It is the fifth book of the Jewish Torah. It's also named as the words of Moses because Moses once again knows he's not going to cross over. Moses oftentimes offered himself up rather than God taking out the people. He sacrificed himself. He gave up his whole life for the people. He laid down his life for the people. I mean, even as I'm speaking to you, this is, this is, things are happening inside of me as I'm speaking to you. The words of Moses, he knows he's not going to cross over, not into the promised land. And these this book that we're reading is Moses' final words to his people. God's, see, even the love that Moses had, I got goosebumps all over me. The love that Moses had for these people, I can't even fathom. But more than that, Moses knew the love that God had for these people. Oh, oh. So you think the words written down in the book of Deuteronomy might be important? Mm. 
So chapters one through 30 is comprised of three sermons. The first one recounts the 40 years in the desert. You know, today's reading tells us it was an 11 day journey. Verse in, 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 Deuter, in first Deuteronomy <clears throat> verse two, normally it only takes 11 days to travel from Mount Sinai to Kadesh Barnea going by way of South Seir, but 40 years after the Israelites left Egypt. An 11 day journey took 40 years. So the first sermon is about that 40 year journey. The second one is a reminder of the need to follow God. Moses' last words is reminding the people of their need to follow God. Do you think there's anything in that for us? What do you think there's anything in, in it about in about the first sermon? Uh, taking an 11 day journey and making it 40 years. I mean, one of the most powerful phrases in here for me is um, Deuteronomy 1, verse 6. You've stayed at this mountain long enough. <laughs> Man, that has spoke to me so many times. Elizabeth, how many times are you going to go around that mountain? Elizabeth, you've been at this mountain long enough. It's time to move on. It's time to put the past behind you, Elizabeth, and let's move on. Mm, mm. second one is the reminder of the need to follow God and then the third one is comfort and redemption so that's where our healing takes place comfort and redemption chapters 31 through 34 the song of Moses it's the blessings of Moses just as we watched and read about Abraham blessing his sons of Isaac blessing his sons. Hmm. This is the blessings of Moses, of him passing the mantle on to Joshua, and then of death of the death of Moses on Mount Nebo. This whole book stresses the uniqueness of God. How they could see, they could literally see the promised land standing on the east side of Jordan, the Jordan River. This is his final words, Moses' final words to his people. You know, we get to read further on Joe's, uh, about how Jesus meditated on Deuteronomy, he quoted it three times when he was being tempted in the desert. It was the words in Deuteronomy that Jesus quoted in the desert when he was being tempted. This book is precious to Jesus. Deuteronomy 8.3, he quoted 6.17 and 6.16, he quoted. Deuter Deuteronomy uh, is a major influence on the domestic and the personal religions of all ages, not just Christianity. <laughs> and it's never been surpassed. Quoted over 80 times just in the New Testament. Talks of a generation of unbelief. Hmm. There they were, standing at the river, looking across, seeing the promised land, but they couldn't believe God loved them enough. To help them inside the promise, inside the promised land, inside the promise. Eileen, you're right. Sometimes we hinder ourselves needlessly. And just even after all God had done for them, how he cared for them, how he fed them in the desert, how he provided water from rocks, how manna rained down from heaven, how he sent quail out of nowhere, how, I mean, he, 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 his presence came to him in the form of a cloud by day and fire by night, how he told them, I'll go before you, I'll fight your battles for you, do not fear, do not be discouraged, I'll be with you. And they couldn't trust him enough 
man, if that's not us, I'll eat your hat. If that's not mm -hmm. me. Yeah, the book of Deuteronomy has grown to be extremely important in my life. And Deuteronomy 28, I'll just tell you right up front, is a 1 through 14. I now realize our scriptures that are life guiding scriptures for all of us. It should be for all of us. I mean, when doubt and fear comes on us, we should flip to Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. Quite frankly, we ought to have it memorized. I don't. We ought to have it memorized. And when doubt and fear come on us, we just ought to start quoting that those scriptures. Those are words wrote down for us. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed coming in. We're blessed going out. Everything I touch is blessed. My enemies will come against me one way and they'll flee from me seven ways. Everything I touch is blessed. My children will be blessed. My livestock is blessed. Wow. And see, it's written in old covenant terms. It's written with a qualification of obedience. But, but praise God because of Jesus I don't have to have a qualification on it anymore because Jesus fulfilled all of the old covenant requirements for me. All I have to do is believe. And all of those blessings will overtake me, Deuteronomy says. And all I have to do is believe. And yet we're standing at the river looking at the promise and the very one thing that we have to do, we don't do. Simply believe. Simply trust. And it's the one thing we struggle with. And then we end up going around the mountain one more time. One more time around the mountain. Instead of into the promise. Oh, Yeah, you guys get to watch me. <laughs> Through my journey, when I get on these videos and I talk about the scriptures that impact my life so profoundly, mm. Mm. <laughs> wow, there's so much in here. These are the words that Moses spoke to all the people, Deuteronomy 1 1, an 11 day journey took 40 years you stayed at this mountain long enough verse six verse eight look i am giving all this land to you go in and occupy it just go in and occupy it for it's the land that the lord swore to give to your ancestors this has been a promise for you for decades for generations it's been your promise You've got so many promises for your life. I mean, this whole book is full of promises for you. That's why I highlight all the way through all of the promises, day after day after day. Every day I've got nuggets that I stand on every single day. There's so many promises I can't even count them all. And yet I doubt. And yet I choose to worry instead of believe. I choose to get discouraged instead of have faith. Why do I do that? I mean, how much more can he do for me? He gives me the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and he writes it all down for me. And yet I still, I still choose to get depressed. I still choose to be discouraged. I still choose to live anxious. Why? I mean, I, I will tell you why. It's part of the reason why my earnestness and my zest for you and especially people like one of my spiritual daughters is on here with me. A couple of my spiritual daughters that's much, much younger than me. Caudry's on here. Cassie's on here. I, I'm, I hope I'm not missing somebody. I've got spiritual daughters out there that I'm telling you, if I could take this out of my heart and just give it to you right now today, what I wouldn't give to have picked this book up, this reading journal, this reading plan 
reading all the way through the Bible, if there's one thing I could give you that will transform your life so that you don't live through worry and fear and discouragement and anxiety and stress and toil and sweat and and all of that junk, it would be this book and to teach you how to find these promises and live by the promises and don't live by what the world says and what the economy is going to do and what the ex is going to do and what the next door neighbor is doing and what your your family does and what all of the things that causes us trouble does. No, no, no. What does this word say? What does God say? What did Jesus die to give you? He died to give you a life full and overflowing. What I wouldn't give to give that to you because it's a renewing of our minds. Instead, I waited until I was much older before I made that commitment and I surrendered my life totally and completely. I went around that mountain for 15 years trying to do it my way, trying to listen to what, oh, what my friends told me. Oh, what, what the people in my career was telling me to do, what the my generation was saying instead of listening to all of those prayer warriors that was praying for me. What? Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Get in the word. Find out what God says. Stop it. Stop. Don't even do what Elizabeth is saying. It's not about what Elizabeth is saying or Debbie or Michelle or Lori or your preacher. It's no, no, no. It's what God is saying. It's what God's saying to you. He's saying to you that you're precious to him, that he'll fight your battles for you, that you got to go to court. Let God go to court for you. Let him argue your case for you. If you'll start now, instead of waiting as long as I waited, why is it I have to wait till I'm in my 60s before I get this and I get to live in peace? Finally, having the peace that surpasses all understanding. Wow. Get in the word. Read the word for yourself. Don't get on a Bible study and wait to see what the teacher's going to say. No, no, no. Read it for yourself. Get this revelation for yourself. That's what these studies are about. That's why we do the retreats. Get to the retreats. Take 0.004% of your time, because that's how much time it takes to go to a weekend retreat. 0.004% of your time to sit there and soak in the word. The word was with God and the word is God. Giving 0.004% of your time. Is that really so much to ask? Man, I want you guys to get it. See, it took me so long because I wasn't in the word. It's, it just boils down to that. It boils down to that because this, this never returns void. It never returns void. You don't have to pick it up and understand it for it to be doing a work in you. It's the sacrifice of your time and of your energy to read. He'll do the work for you. Hmm. Did I tell you Deuteronomy is kind of special to me? Did I tell you that Deuteronomy has changed me? Yeah. I'm giving it all to you, he says. That's what, that's what, that's what verse eight says. It, 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 he's saying to Elizabeth in verse eight, Elizabeth, I'm giving all of this to you. It's the land that I swore to your ancestors that I would give to you. It's all yours. All you have to do is believe, Elizabeth. All you have to do is trust me. That's all he's asking of us. I don't have to do the animal sacrifices. The ultimate sacrifice has already been done. The blood's already been shed. No more right, right earlobe, right big toe. No more of that. Sprinkle the blood on the altar. I don't have to do any of that. Praise God that in heaven, I don't have to do any of that. Thank you, Jesus. And oh, and I'll bless you. I'll make you as numerous as the stars. I don't have to worry about my children. God will take care of them. I'll multiply you a thousand times more and bless you. That's verse 11. 
Oh, but I don't like your problems and your bi bi your bickering. He tell he'll tell me I don't like your murmuring and complaining, Elizabeth. I don't like your murmuring and complaining. That's what he says to me in verse twelve. <laughs> and the decisions you make. He talks to me about the decisions I make in verse seventeen. For the decisions you make is God's decision. So if I'm if I'm seeking God in my decisions, that just tells me. I seek God before I make my decisions. Verse 18, at that time, I gave you instructions about everything you were to do. Did I tell you, did I start this whole thing out saying that he hears my prayers and that he answers my prayers? I pray in, I pray in my, my, my special prayer language he's given me about the things that I don't know what to do. I don't have an answer for. So I seek him. In the, in the way that this book tells me that the mysteries are revealed to me, that's how we understand the mysteries of God. And then I go forth and I make decisions and I know that I'm making the decisions that God has given me. Because he has instructed me, he has given me the instructions about everything I'm supposed to do. And then I go forth and I occupy. I have to go and occupy. I don't get to stay at the mountain. I have to move forward. You've been at this mountain long enough. I'm in verse 21. Go and occupy. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. <laughs> and then starting in verse 26, I've got a note that I wrote right above verse 26. This has to be a haunting memory for Moses. Because it's about when they rebelled against God and refused to go in and they complained. And right above verse 29, I wrote, they did not believe God loved them enough and they refused to cross over. Even though in verse 30, the Lord your God is going ahead of you, he'll fight for you. You know, those are words for me today that what is it that I'm attempting to do or I sense that I'm supposed to do or I even want to go do he goes ahead of me he'll fight for me yeah there'll be battles yes there will be battles he tells us that in advance so we won't be caught off guard but he goes ahead of me he fights the battles for me thank you God thank you God he will fight for you and you saw how the Lord your God cared for you all along the way. See, in my 63 years, I can look back and I can see how God has cared for me. I see how God has cared for my mama. I saw how he cared for my daddy. How he's cared for my children. How he's perfected those things that's concerned me all through the years. Mm. <laughs> But boy, verse 34, those reminders. But when he hears me complain, he becomes very angry. He doesn't like my, he does not like my complaining. Now, praise God. Remember, this is Old Testament because I don't feel the wrath of God. Thank you, Jesus. Because Jesus took the wrath. Don't, don't let the Old Testament words take you there. You don't get to feel as a believer God's anger anymore. Praise God. Jesus took that anger for us. But we need to know that God doesn't change. He still doesn't like our complaining. Hmm. And then, of course, Moses is remembering how God become angry with him. Why this is a haunting memory for Moses. They found it so hard to trust God that they didn't believe he loved them. And then over in my column in 2021, I wrote, what will it take, Elizabeth, for you to finally believe God loves you enough to take care of you? That was my own personal note in 2021. Hmm. Yeah, that's Deuteronomy. And I've used all my time on Deuteronomy. And Luke is amazing. <clears throat> Probably today at noontime, I'm going to do the new nugget today. I'm going to, I'm going to speak on Luke, uh, Luke. Chapter 5, verse 31, Jesus answered them, 
Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. Our last retreat was full, full of people who continued to struggle because people inside of religious circles, people inside of churches have hurt people and it turned people against God because religious people hurt people. We are shocked that religious people will hurt us. And, it, and our explanation is right there. Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I came not to call those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinner. Many are called, but few are chosen. I mean, look at the, the disciples. Who did he call? He called those who were the sinners. And we expect them to be perfect and to never make a mistake. And when they make mistakes, then we take it personal. And we allow that to be the reason why we turn against God. When the real truth is, the only reason we allow that to happen is because we have our own issues anyway. Okay, I'm getting into my new nugget. I got to stop. <laughs> verse 8, though. Luke chapter 6, verse 8 is a nugget that we all should meditate on. Jesus knew their thoughts. Jesus knows your thoughts. The Bible tells us there's nothing hidden that won't be brought to light. Nothing hidden that won't be brought to light. And then I already started with the Psalms. So good. Tell the world how glorious he is. Psalm 66, 2. Psalm 66, 16. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he did for me. For I cried out to him for help, praising him as I spoke. Verse 19, but God did listen. He paid attention to my prayer. And then Proverbs 11, 24 and 26, I could talk for another 30 minutes on this, but I won't, I won't. I'm, I'm closing. Give freely and become more wealthy. Give freely and become more wealthy. Stop penny pinching. Stop worrying that the waitress is getting one over on you. Stop worrying that they're going to cheat you out of a dessert. Give freely and you'll become wealthy. Be stingy. Be stingy and lose everything. And we do it in the name of being a good steward. Yes, we should be a good steward. But do not let that poverty mentality convince you to justify your stinginess. The generous will prosper. The generous will prosper. You can't outgive God. Here is one of the rules I live by in my life. When I'm out there living my life for the Lord and I feel led to say or do something, when in doubt, I don't. When in doubt, I don't. Oh, God, do you want me to go up and speak to this person? When in doubt, I don't. Oh, am I supposed to correct them? I, Lord, I, I see what they're doing. Am I supposed to correct them? When in doubt, I don't. Am I supposed to speak? When in doubt, I don't. Do I get it right every time? Oh, no. When in doubt, I don't. But when it comes to giving, when in doubt, I give. When in doubt, I give. When in doubt, I give. No. When in doubt, I give. Proverbs 11.24 says, Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. People curse those who hoard their grain, but they bless the one who sells in time of need. Man, I'll tell you what, those are words to live by on this thankful Thursday. I am so grateful for God's word. I'm so grateful he wrote them down so somebody as simple as I can understand it. God bless you guys.